from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. Well, if you like Dumbo, then you'll love Hugo because Hugo has elephants. I'm Brett. <laughs> and I'm Harley. You said let's r- let her rip. Ta- <laughs> you, you gave me the let her rip tater chip motivational speech that'll be cut out of and in post. But yes, we're headed back to Hugo figuratively for they've got a couple of things going on. And I didn't know there's a whole slew of stuff that they're, they do down there that had no, I had no idea about. So you were you uh, made a trip back to back. one of our favorite barbecue stands. Well, and I didn't realize until I got there, it was kind of looking at their wall of fame, how long it had been since I'd been there. Number one, it's it, right off the bat, it's an obvious that they've enclosed it. You know, everything is indoor now, which I think is probably better for them and better for, for overall business. Unless you're in the middle of a pandemic, then it gets weird. But it's been a few years. Since I've been to Butcher, and the last time I went was with you, and uh, let me tell you, they don't miss a beat down there. We got there, what probably should have been at about 9 o'clock in the morning, but we got there at about 10.30. The line was already out the door. Social distancing was So in- you went on a Saturday. I went on a Saturday. Yeah, you can't. Well, when do I go? Thursday. I can't go on a Thursday. Like, my new my new gig doesn't allow for many... <laughs> Many weekend getaways, so yeah, we Thursday's not a weekend. Well, well, I know, but I don't get to go on a Thursday. I can't go on a Thursday. Why? Because if you want to do something adult, you've got to plan it around other adults that can watch. No, you just go by yourself. I can't you, do that. You, if this, I don't, this, I can't go without my baby stuff. Is I can't go. Sorry, with, I, if I would have went without Mama, Mama would have. You could have brought her back a hot link. She would have turned me into a hot dog <laughs> and a brisket and a rump roast and then fed me raw to the chihuahuas. But yeah, man, uh, the, I don't know what you got the last time you went, but we went ahead and we went all in. And we were like, for the same amount of money that we're both going to eat anyway, we went with the meat locker. I mean, yeah, no, I get you. I, I understand, but I'm going to have to be a hundred percent real. Sure. When it comes to butcher, but when it comes to the butcher, when it comes to butcher barbecue, <laughs> yeah. you've got to do one of the sandwiches. The oh sandwich, my God. is that what you had last time you went? The time before okay. the last time that I went, I don't, I don't just wait for you to go places. Well, I, I know that, but you said you and the missus went, and she liked it. Yes, and I, for those playing along at home, you know that Amber's a tough customer. So, <laughs> Amber, a.k.a. the voice at the beginning of our show, right. is the pickiest eater really, on the she planet. She really is. The most picky adult eater on the planet. I I don't think I've, I've met, I don't know, I've met seven months old, seven month olds that have, that aren't as picky about their Dude, their it's food. not even, not even a matter of the food. Like, the food can be spot on and, and that won't matter. If something throws her off her game, if she doesn't like the aesthetic of the restaurant, or the ice, or something, it'll ruin the whole meal. I mean, I get it. We've been into some. We've had some dusty diner experiences where there's cobwebs. Don't I get understand. me wrong. Love her to death. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that is is one of those things where it's like, Arr! there's a Yelp review, and then there's the Amber review. Ooh, if Amber got really into Yelp. Oh man, it would change the game. It would, and you would be dusting your asses off <laughs> because that's the one thing she keys in on first. Oh yeah, it's literally, literally, very first thing is the cleanliness of the restaurant. If the place isn't clean enough, sometimes she'll just turn around, and I'm like, "Where did she go?" Right. We've been to restaurants where you've ate, I've ate, Tara has ate, and she has. She might sip on a water. Maybe. Unless she knows the city water is bad. But anyway, Butcher Barbecue, Butcher Barbecue highly, highly recommend this place. I have to say, and we talked about this last time. Uh, we were talking, we were comparing and contrasting barbecue places because there's a lot to choose from in Oklahoma. And we're going to be talking probably some, some Clark uh, barbecue here in the next few weeks probably. I got to say, I think you're right. You didn't say them specifically. You didn't say Butcher Barbecue. but you know, we talked about another one that's a local favorite, and a lot of people 
would probably share the sentiment that it's probably their favorite. Butcher Barbecue, it, from where I live, it's a 35, 40 minute drive. And I promise you, it's the best barbecue in Oklahoma. I don't know if it's the best bar- that I've had. I don't know. I don't know for a fact that it's the best barbecue in Oklahoma. Yeah. But damn, it's good. It's real. It's real close. Um, their sausages is, is handmade. Their hot links are homemade. Like the whole thing. The guy that owns and operates the joints probably half our age. Go, go, boy. I mean, you you did it. You've you've achieved greatness. I I enjoyed it. But on the other side, you we invited you to go, and I was busy doing. We had to winterize the the camper. I thought when when I was told you're going to winterize it, I thought you're going to be you know blowing out the refrigerant or getting all the water out of the lines. I didn't realize it That's was what an we actual, were doing. Well, I didn't realize that it was an actual camping trip as well. Well, it's easier to pull into a spot and, and then dump you, your shit. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, you've got all the all the hookups, right? So you have you have plenty of time to clean and to blow out the lines. Mm-hmm. There's bathroom facilities there, right. so you can be cleaning and dumping and washing. Without not or without uh, losing the ability to use the facilities, the ability to lose the facilities to on use the next the only facilities. okay yeah. <laughs> so, but my question is, I think I saw someone uh, commented on your photographs of of said trip. Camping doesn't end. What you just calling it good for the no no the no, no 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 no. We're just not going to be running water on any future camping trips. So how do you do that? You just use their on-site just use the shop. on-site facilities okay. but yeah i mean we we will we'll, we'll definitely put in at least a couple more camping trips but you don't want the lines to freeze while it's sitting in Absolutely. in the sh- in the shed yeah but more than likely we'll spend at least one of the upcoming holidays at the old campsite well and there's something about camping and being outdoors and, the, and the, that crispness of the morning and that first cup of coffee and that you know what I mean? The the there's a that chill. Oh yeah, I I love camping in the cold. Yeah, it's, it's I to me I think it's the best. Um, but you know, it's when the fire like, makes the most sense. Right, absolutely. Fire in the summertime is just like um, I smell like wood for nothing, and I'm hot <laughs> and I'm sweaty. And I'm going to sweat all night long. Well, if you want to spend a holiday with an elephant or two, uh, we got you hooked up. Coming up next. So, Brett, you may not be aware of this or not, but there are only like six weeks left in the year 2020. This is the first fiscal year in a while (laughs) that I'm actually going to get to file taxes, and I may actually not be sued by the IRS. Not bad. I mean, (laughs) you know. Accomplishments. Accomplishments. Is that from all of your work with the Holiday Tax Group? Yes, absolutely. They, I have narrowed everything down. I'm claiming everything on my taxes. As a charitable expense. <laughs> I don't know that they would recommend that. <laughs> well, if you're looking for advice, like me, and you need advice, you need to contact the Holiday Tax Group. You get a free 30-minute consultation. And you can get that by calling 405-730-3100. And remember, if you are military or a teacher, you're going to get a discount. So give them a call or check them out on the internet at Holiday Tax Group. That's Holiday with two L's. So, Harley, we journey back. Back to Hugo. Hugo, Oklahoma. Not only the home of some pretty good barbecue, a circus cemetery, but an elephant refuge. The last time I was in Hugo, mm-hmm. you were there as well. No. Yes, didn't you, you were. Didn't you it was again? for my birthday. That's right. That's right. That was when I, there's, it's so funny you mentioned that. Somehow it popped up where I was looking through photographs because I take a hundred thousand photographs per every quarter mile that I do anything, and it was at the cabin. Yes, at uh, Hugo Lake. Mm-hmm. I was wearing Crocs, and I commented because <laughs> I was standing in leaves saying I need some camouflage Crocs because they they really the Crocs I had on really stood out. But a lot of things to do in Hugo. I mean, we've talked about them a few times. But the one thing we haven't done, and maybe weather permitting this probably has a lot to do with it, is we haven't checked out the the Endangered Ark Foundation's Elephant Reserve. Yes. Now, they have a lot of things that they they do over there. And what I didn't realize, I have did some research, is that the Asian elephant is probably one of the most endangered elephants in the world. Now, a lot of circuses use them. 
Zoos have rescued a lot of them, but they've also been poached over the years for, for their tusks and their ivory. And who would have thunk that small-town America, Hugo, would be such a big part of raising awareness and fundraising for said elephant research? Yeah, it seems a little out of place. Maybe. Unless you look at the the town's moniker. Right. Was it Circus City? It's Circus, Circus City. City, USA? Absolutely. So the Endangered Ark Foundation, it's a nonprofit dedicated to the preservation of Asian elephants. They started it in 93 by a couple. Nobody, nothing, nobody famous. This isn't like some world famous doctor or uh, researchers. It was started by Doc, uh, DR and Isla Miller. They've helped preserve endangered elephants for how long is that? Almost 30 years. Almost 30 years. And their herd is actually one of the largest in the United States, which I find mind-boggling that the town of Hugo, Oklahoma, has one of the largest herds of elephants in the United States. Well, and it's not even... And I don't know how you compare sizes of herds. They've got, I don't know, relatively 15 elephants. That's quite a quite a herd. And they range from... Five years old to 65 years old. Now, I don't know what the average lifespan of an elephant is. It seems old. I didn't, I don't really, I don't have a lot of elephant trivia. Now, well, you know, according to recent research, they, they project that there are anywhere from 35,000 to 45,000 of those elephants le- left on Earth. And, and as of 2000, there were 285 that were captive in North America, and only 35 of those were actually breeders. And that's what they do there. That's how they kind of continue the the legacy of the Asian elephant. They're not just keeping them for, I don't know, for safe storage. They're actually breeding them and and trying to continue herds. If my math is correct, they have literally a a third of a percent of all of the Asian elephants in the world. I'm terrible at math, and I, you know... I could be dead wrong. Well, I know, but how many times have I said... 65% 65% of, in my, <laughs> and 60% of the time, I'm wrong every time. <laughs> so I'm entitled to believe your math over mine. But more to the point, there are things you can do. You can actually go and be around elephants. You can milk them. You, well, can you milk an elephant? I feel like you're joshing. <laughs> I don't think you can, I don't know that you would want to milk an elephant if you could milk an elephant. When I think of milking an elephant, I can't my Star Wars in me wants me goes to uh the last Jedi when when Luke goes up to the and takes the milk out of the I, can't, I don't know what it was called, I'm sorry. And then drinks the milk. Do you remember that? Yes, but I don't know that's appropriate conversation. Well, I don't either. The- I don't either. <laughs> I, I don't, but it, the creature looked kind of like it was a, a relative of the elephant. But if you want, you can do a public tour. They do public tours there. So what would happen in mm-hmm. one of these public tours? What do they do? Well, you get a guided educational tour through the facility. And D- during, during, during an educational right. tour of this facility. Anything can happen. Would they tell you about milking elephants, for instance? I doubt it. Or what percentage of elephants that they have in comparison to the world population of Asian elephants? Probably. And you can also feed an elephant. What are they, like Snickers? Oh my gosh. I don't know. You've wa- <laughs> you've been watching, what are some of the cartoon, uh, Dumbo? Uh, your, your life experience of elephant elephants consist of dumb. Okay, so you had a dumb. Oh, go ahead and tell I, the story. I can know I you're tell going the story? To, yeah, you're going to do it. So when I was a kid, yeah, one of the coolest things that I had as a child was a wall size, life size character painted on my wall in my bedroom by my mother. She painted Dumbo. He was huge, and every ancillary character in the Walt Disney World was either hanging on or leaning on or really? jumping from Dumbo. Yes. I have a similar story. On my wall, I had the poison logo with the tongue coming out of the poison and like the eyes on the top and then Guns and Roses on crayon in the other wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I also wrote, I love Wendy Holton. So Wendy Holton, if you're out there, I did love you, but I've moved on. I was five. So if you want to experience all these things, you can uh, 
you can pamper the res- residents. They also teach you about elephant husbandry. What is that? Dude, I hope they tell us about it because I don't want to marry an elephant. Well, I need to know because I've done a husbandry twice and I wasn't that good at it. Check my references. But I'm saying what goes into I and I'm being totally serious. How what makes you a good elephant husband? Legitimately what it <laughs> You know what I mean? Like what how do I become a better do you go do this and you come home and you become a better person? No. Do, do you take a lesson from an elephant on how to be a husband? No, it's husbandry is working with animals. That's what that is? Yes. Oh my god, I had no idea. I was <laughs> how old were you when you found out that husbandry wasn't how to be a how to be an elephant husband, but how to work with animals? I had no idea. But you also get to watch them get spa treatments, which is pretty cool. You know, get their nails trimmed and they it looks like it would be painful because you, have you ever seen them? They kind of take a they take a knife and just kind of Ooh. scrape it off. But buyer beware! It's by appointment only because depending on the elephant schedule, they have to have the enough staff around. You know, you, you, it's hands on, so it's all hands on deck. So they kind of have some quirky schedules. So you might have to check in with them, but you can take pictures. And it goes without saying. Closed toe shoes are probably they they recommend that you wear those, but I think if an elephant steps on your foot, your toes are gonna squirt out the front of your shoe whether yeah. it's closed or not. <laughs> but I think the the shoe thing is probably more in reference to stepping in giant piles of, of an elephant. Elephant dung. elephant dung. <laughs> You don't want it you don't want that That's squeezing through your toes. What's it's funny, you know, I went from having boxers to having chihuahuas. It's different when you when you step on a chihuahua turd it doesn't just it, it just kind of pokes up through your toe it doesn't squish through and it kind of smashes like a milk dud so i get it i understand that <laughs> you ever done it barefoot you ever stepped in dog dump barefoot <sighs> i have so i understand the the quality of a good shoe <laughs> <laughs> so the cost on that yeah. is 50 dollars a person for people who are over 13 years old right and they cut you a pretty big discount if you're under the age of 13, which I'm feeling much younger. Yeah, I'm feeling ver- when, so much younger. When I see that it's only $25. For three-year-olds to 25-year-olds. It's still not a bad deal. Three years old get. to 12 years old. Yeah, three, Oh, yeah, that's right. Not three-year-olds to 25. <laughs> but no, three-year-olds to 12-year-olds. To, golly, I can't say it. <laughs> three to 12, it's 25 bucks. Not a bad deal. If you're looking for something a little bit more intimate than yeah. the than the public tours, yeah, they do offer private encounters. I like a private encounter. With <laughs> so an the, the private encounter includes a unique experience. They are, the facility's closed to only you and your party. Mm-hmm. They have elephant experts who are going to guide your group through through the facility. They're giving you one on one time with a really knowledgeable staff. They're going to talk to you about the Asian elephant species, and you get elephant selfies. I think they're called elephant selfies. Elephant selfies? Yes. Um, the private encounters are available every day of the week, depending on the time of the year. Days and times will vary, obviously. Uh, they're typically available in the morning or in the afternoon. Right, about an hour, kind of looking at the scheduling, about an hour and a half apart between tours. For example, from 8.30 and it goes to 10 and then 11.30 to 1. Right. But so <clears throat> the private encounter, you are paying a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Five people or less. Five bills. A pop. No. Five, $500 each. No, oh, five right. people or less. Oh, my bad. Yes. Yeah. $500. $500. And then it, each additional guest is $50. So that's uh I mean if you pull your money together or if you really like elephants you really you really got to like elephants. But if you think about it, it's a I'm going to say it cliche, it's a small price to pay for something that's unique. I don't know of a lot of places that even allow you to get that close, even the zoo. I think they might do some they do some VIP stuff, but you're still kind of right. Yeah, I mean, at the zoo, you're you're behind that six inch thick plexiglass. How do you wall. feel about zoos? I'm not a huge fan. Why? As a general rule, I feel like 
I don't know. Why are we talking about this? Because I feel like I'm going to shoot, no. shoot the show in I the just, foot. You're not gonna, why would you shoot the show in the foot? I don't you're know. know I'm about something I don't like zoos because I can't get up close and personal with the animals. And sometimes they're not out there. You yeah, know, you see that a lot. You pay, and I pay the same amount to see one as I do none or ten. So I kind of feel like my money's worth is... Uh, and unless you're a zoo friend, and it's like, oh, well, we'll come back next week. Otherwise, I don't know. I think you kind of you start a, an elephant fund and say, hey, next year, let's go let's go try this thing. And I think it, it's, again, you get enough people together. It's, it's a good value. But if you're in for the long haul, Awesome Adventures, which is they're a local, they, they do all kinds of stuff. They throw on paintball tournaments. They do all kinds of stuff. They've and they partnered with Endangered Ark Foundation for I think probably the most unique to this area experience. You know, you hear about Disney Safari where you can stay on the safari and look out over the. There are places where you can sleep with tigers around here, which is great. But you can't. How close can you get to get to a tiger before it rips your face off? I think an elephant. You're in. You're in good hands there. But you can actually rent a cabin and have breakfast with elephants. Do you have to share a bed with elephants? <laughs> no, you don't. But they're li- literally the cabins are located right next to the Endangered Ark Foundation Secluded Elephant Reserve. So you get to come out. Breakfast is at 8 a.m. I mean, it's a one-of-a-kind opportunity. It's a little steep, but I think for the money, $500 a night. But you get to stay. It's not just a private tour where you're like, okay, we're done, and the private tour is an hour. I mean, come on. You get to stay all night, wake up to elephants, and then it's only, I think it's $15 for any additional person after two people. The cabin sleep five, so pull your money. Yeah, I mean, that that makes a lot of sense. If you, But again, I think that's one of those situations where you really got to like elephants. Yeah, you do. And you can even do an all-day thing. Where you spend the day with elephants. Well, I really think that the reason that we're talking about the Endangered Ark Foundation today right, is because of the event that they have specifically this time of year, mm-hmm. the Elephant Holiday Encounter. Yes, tell us more about this, Harlan. So apparently in Hugo, Oklahoma, Santa doesn't have reindeer pull his sleigh. It's elephants. Or, as they call them down there... Ella elves. Elephant elves. Elephant elves. <laughs> now, it's a, a rare opportunity, especially, I like that they're still kind of having a business as usual event. But yes, it's it's the same public as a public event, only maybe slightly trimmed down due to COVID rules and regulations. And you can go find that out for yourselves. But weather permitting. You get hot cocoa and cookies. You get to cruise on the holly trolley. They'll take you out into the woods to track down the elephants and feed them Christmas cake. Yes. That is cool as hell. And it's only 50 bucks. That's that's not not bad. Not bad at all. And again, it's one of those situations where this particular year, you want to check it out in advance. And from what I understand, just because, just from some of the research that I did, there's only about Four hundred. They they expect about four hundred people. So you definitely want to get in there and get your reservations if you haven't already. And you can also find out ways to donate. You can adopt an elephant. You can adopt. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? I've got a crap ton of kids. Yes, I've got a thirteen year old boy that literally eats about four hundred dollars in groceries a week. Right. I don't know how much an elephant eats, but I bet you it's a lot. I don't know if I'm going to be able to adopt an elephant. But I will say, I promise you, if you tell an elephant to do something last year, it will remember it this year. They have a better (laughs) memory than a 13-year-old does. Can they rinse out their cups when they're done with them? Dude, they can rinse out. They can wash their own back. (laughs) They can pick stuff up with their nose. I think it's okay. Or their trunk. But you know what I mean? Yes. But yes, find out how you can get involved by going to endangeredarkfoundation.org. You can also check them out on Facebook. Link's going to be in the show notes. Find out their availability because we all know things change in an instant. Make sure your spot's available. Make sure they're available. And you know what? It's getting really cro- It's getting really close to Christmas. Mm-hmm. You've done all of the boring stuff. Yeah. You've done all of the 
the ugly hol- ugly sweater contest and, and da, da, blah, da. blah blah blah. Do something cool with an elephant. I'm legitimately that wrong. Well, when I was w- looking at things that we were kind of make trying to comprise a list of holiday activities that didn't consist of, and nothing against Christmas light tours, but there's a lot of those. There's a lot of the same old, same old, same old. This is genuinely unique. Whether you do the Christmas thing, whether you're doing just the, it's a Friday, a Friday weekend thing. It's truly one of the most unique things in Oklahoma. I don't know of a lot of places that do it. What I like about these people is they they don't exploit. And I'm no, not, this is all for the benefit yeah, of the elephants. Absolutely. This is, the purpose of this place is not to take advantage of elephants, mm-hmm. but it is to provide for the elephants and to provide for their continued lineage. Now, one thing they are doing in... You definitely want to get involved. They have a special project going right now. They're trying to raise money for a observation deck so that you can observe the elephants in their in their habitat. Yes, the the entry donation is a little pricey, but if you can throw them five, it's it's a five hundred dollar in the door. Your don- donation is going directly towards preservation and conservation. Do it if you can. And I'm thinking if we help them raise enough money yeah. that on top of the observation deck, they'll include one of those giant Jurassic Park doors. Oh, man. That would be cool. Welcome to Endangered Ark Foundation. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we know what happened. Yeah, that's that's never... You never want to hear that. It just means something bad's going to happen. But do your part, Endangered Ark Foundation. Well, I was doing do your part, Endangered Ark. Foundation, okay. right? That yeah, makes more sense. Like that. <laughs> so, do your part for the Endangered Ark Foundation. As always, please tell your friends, tell your family. You know there are I people. Know. You know there are people in your circle. Yes, that are looking for something to do this weekend, and they've got no idea that the Only an OK Show exists, mm-hmm. and that we've got a thousand ideas for things to do this weekend. Yes, tell them about it. Tell your grandmother. Tell her to invite us over for Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner. Christmas duck. A Christmas goose. A Peking duck. Like when he like when they chopped the head off. <laughs> and this has been the Only an OK Show. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. And we're out of here. Peace. I like it both ways. It's <laughs> going in the outtakes. <laughs> oh man, what did I see? I want to start collecting knives, but not like you know. I don't want like a. I don't want a scabbard. I want Japanese cooking knives. Have Three, you ever seen a- two, one. No, and welcome to the show. No, we got a damn no. good show for <laughs> no, you today. We got a, a real humdinger of a show. No. Stop. Three, two, one. Brett's going to collect knives. I am. Welcome to the show. No. Don't. It's not welcome to. You don't. Can we not talk? We never talk. Welcome to the show. Mm -mm. No. Welcome to the Hugo show. No. Three, two, one. Well, you know what rhymes with Dumbo? Hugo, but not really. Only because it has a hard O at the end. But if you like elephants and you like Christmas, why? You've turned into the Morton Downey of podcasting. You meatbag. All right. um, Three, two, one.